Hello. Hello. Confidence. Hi, world. Did you see how confident that was? You guys didn't even know I went oh, live. No, I was so proud of <laughs> Because I didn't say, oh, God, are we live? <laughs> <laughs> Except we hear just did right now. Yeah, can everybody hear us? Go ahead and let us know in the chat, <laughs> Chelsea, please. Yeah, um, just Chelsea, great. no one else. Just Chelsea. Just, just... <laughs> it's now she it's, knows her job. Yeah, it's part of the rapport. It's part of the. I don't know. <laughs> it's part of the stream. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Thank you so much for telling us, Chelsea. Okay. Yes. Um. All right. So, hello. Uh. Here we are. Still this many days later needing to say that it's absolutely fucking absurd that we can't arrest the people who murdered Breonna Taylor because Black Lives Matter and she mattered and it's bullshit and we I know we know but I just I don't know there's something at this point for me of leaving this screen up that just like lets us like re like live the anger for a minute again every Thursday that we see this because come on um, so I just kind of wanted to put that out there. Please, uh, use exclamation point BLM exclamation point, um, donate in the chat to get information. And, uh, another reminder that, um, in, God, was it really June and now it's September? How is that possible? But uh. in June, um, a lot of black content creators on Twitch, uh, which is our platform, saw a big surge of donations and participation, and now they've seen a big decline in that. So uh, just a reminder to you all as content consumers that if you have free um, uh, content hours to consume, then uh, to consider seeking out black content creators and supporting what they do. Um, I have plenty that I love that I would be happy to share with you if you want me to give you recommendations. Um, anything else we need to say on that front? Um, I have a <coughs> quick, like, I think it's important, you know, to also notice where positive headway has been made. And this is going to start off with a little bit of a scare, but I promise it gets better. Um, so a few weeks ago, my housemate um, informed me that one of the houses in our neighborhood um, had just posted like within their door, like a sign on their on like the glass window facing out uh, a White Lives Matter sign. <sighs> Right. And I'm not going to get into a lot of the specifics there, but the fact that it was within my own neighborhood in Baltimore, which is a predominantly black, you know, populated city, um, it it felt really, really fucking gross. Uh, but I'm happy to report that that person has been spoken to and they have since taken down their sign. So, yeah, it's it's a small, tiny little victory. <laughs> Uh, in a sea of of shit so you know just gotta keep keep going truly yep gotta you know one one person at a time one white lives matter at a sign my recent favorite thing that i've seen on the internet was uh the blue line flags someone posted where they had colored them in with the pride colors and said don't forget to help out your neighbors with their do it diy <laughs> pride flags and like i just really love that because like the idea of just going around and like marker coloring in uh blue line <laughs> things with like pride flags just makes me really happy um <clears throat> converting something horrible into something better um nice. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so yes, you know, do your part if you can, where you can, how you can, but also take care of yourselves because we love you and you need to be in the fight for the marathon, not just the sprint. <sighs> okay. Uh, okay. We're also going to take it a little short today because I need to ice my ankle soon. <laughs> <laughs> also, the fall update is out for Animal Crossing, so that's probably just why. general bulletin. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Black Lives Matter. Do yeah, your part. Also, Take care of yourself. I spent Black literally Black hours Animal Crossing. and couldn't find three summer beetles on palm trees before they went away, and I hate this game now. But, <laughs> okay, we're not that? talking about Animal hours. Crossing. Ava. You can change your whole Rachel and Ava, I will mute you. We have business to attend. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> um, so let's get into tonight's game. Um, I will need stress levels uh, in game. Feel free to tell us your stress levels personally if you feel like sharing them um, 
you can be here okay you can be here and <laughs> bring bring yourself as you are um <clears throat> so i have at the top of my stack rick um it, it's a good question so i had written here four okay. but i distinctly remember from two weeks ago um that i had um I should have done my refresh for like mind slash blood stress because okay. I, I donated and right now I'm at four, but I have in my chart three mind stress and one silver stress. I don't think that that's accurate anymore. I think I should. Okay. Uh, so, I think I should be able to. Okay. Um, I do remember um, looking through like our recent roles was the was the D three at the end of last session that you only rolled a one on? Was that the refresh or was that something else? Because I I know that, that's asking you to remember something so specific. So I think I think that was it. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I remember I actually so, have yeah. it the way that it's written in my notes. Like I thought that I had marked you as four mind stress and then you gotten rid of one of them uh, for the refresh. But if you think that you're owed another refresh like besides that from something else no i i i specifically didn't remember rolling that but now that i see it i'm like oh yeah yeah i did okay, okay. So we're good okay cool um so i'm at four so you're at four Hennis. i am at one minrai yeah so in game i'm at zero which is wild minrai's living that life mm -hmm. did you I feel like know. specified okay yeah <laughs> I think the, you know, decimal system has lost its value at this point. So I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Well, <laughs> send you a number large enough, please. Here's virtual hugs. Thank you. <laughs> good, good luck and let us know if you need anything. Uh, Kelvy? Oh, uh, we're at a zero. At a zero. How nice. Barnabas. Uh, one. You get worse. And one? <laughs> Rachel in real life is pr probably doing the least stressful that I've been s since the pandemic started. Hey, so congratulations! Hooray for fucking growth! It's been a lot, and now it's like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm kind of working, and I kind of know what I'm doing, and I'll see your okay. lipstick is fire. Yeah. <gasps> Thank you. I just bought it because I kept seeing people on stream wearing cute lipstick, and I was like, I could wear cute lipstick. Damn straight. Damn straight. <laughs> All right. And also, Rick's nails are also really nice. I just noticed that earlier, and I didn't want. I like that you said Rick's nails Sam, because sorry, <laughs> Rick's nails are also <laughs> because <laughs> Ulrich is Rick's, also yeah. has weird. fabulous nails. <laughs> Barnabas <laughs> also has this fabulous lip color, so but it's blood, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, got them vampire nails going. Yeah. Ooh, oh, those nice. Are nice. I like it. There's only like an extra like, five dollars. I got like the shellac, so I can like wash dishes and they don't come flying off. It's nice. Yeah, until you have to get those things off your fingernails. Shellac you just is... get them done again. Yeah, actually, you know, sucks. you give yourself like a month and a half break. You have to like, like soak them in whatever oh, no, it's called really for cool. forever. They use like these drills and they like That's better. Like, it's <laughs> Okay. We're gonna focus on the game. So. Better. We're gonna focus on the game. All right. I <clears throat> okay. We have a lot going on in the game, but interestingly, we have also uh reached a point where um Did we get Andrew? Hmm? His stress stress level? Yes, yeah. Hennis. I, I did get Hennis one. Oh, yes. okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Thanks for checking. I'm sober. Um, so where uh, last session, um, the primary objective of the what we set out to do with just seven days to do it was to um, find a way to call off the demolition of the building that you are in, um, which, according to what your your characters know, and and I guess like playing my hand as a GM, like, we have essentially, you've essentially done, right? Um, but we have not resolved everything that players are doing in the campaign, nor um, have we accomplished all of the objectives that I've heard you all name in the past as things that you see as kind of the, the culminating points of this 
uh, intro campaign. So what I wanted to get from you guys was a sense of where you as players feel um, the campaign is at for where do we want to call this arc of the campaign over, what objective would need to be completed to do so, and a conversation that we probably need to have off stream um, but that should weigh into your decision is, are we continuing the campaign? Are you interested in continuing the campaign? And if so, are we going to continue to stream it? And if so, are we continuing to stream it with Helpful Goat? Um, and and those are, you know, those are questions, again, big questions that we're asking, um, things that I need to talk to Helpful Goat staff about anyway. If uh, But I would need to know, first and foremost, if players were interested in uh, making that happen. Um, Dude, what... Kelvy said to to Farquad last time. Did that like fully end the building thing then, or so we're gonna? Is that what? You, the, I was just wondering, like, what sparked this? Yes. Specifically. Uh, so awesome. so okay. Faisal agreed through blackmail. Right, was blackmailed, <laughs> um, and said that he would stop um, Harmonious Properties from moving forward with the demolition of the building. Um. So that is you know, where we started <laughs> months and months ago, that was the ultimate goal of your group, right? Was to prevent the demolition of this building. Um, so I want you all to articulate to me or to each other, like if you want to talk about it first, um, where you as players feel um, the open-endedness would need to have a point to put on it for the campaign, this arc of the campaign to feel complete to you. Um, so posing that question i know big question right off the bat <laughs> to you um anybody want to jump in yeah i oh sorry no, Eva. you go ahead <laughs> <laughs> um i feel like for me it's super important to get to the bottom of the vis stuff mm -hmm. i would personally like for there to be some kind of resolution with kelvy Either he becomes a bug or we cure him. Uh, I think, like, for me, especially, like, Barnabas uh, is literally, like... Yeah. Things, but... <laughs> no! Kelby will not die! Uh, uh, and um, I'm just... Uh, so thinking about the Vis stuff, and, like, not, like, obviously solving all of Vis, because that would probably be a lot... But I feel like that's Barnabas's main goal right now and going up to New Heaven and trying to understand, you know, stuff with King Teeth, but really like figuring out what's going on with Vis and seeing if I can, if he can fix Kelby. So jumping off of that, um, I feel that I, I want resolution with what Kelby is doing, but more so uh, in the immediate Mr. Moonlight, Lord Faisal situation where... Uh, you know, we we have arranged effectively another meeting to basically, in my understanding, to kind of put the issue of the apartment and everything surrounding that to bed. Mm -hmm. um, and then that would kind of probably set the stage for what uh, I imagine the Elfier uh, climate would be like for part two uh, i think that in regards to like the vis i i, I see that and kelvy like kelvy's specific per, uh, predicament to be like it feels more like a, a a possible part two like a really strong part two thread for me um because w w like th that would be the one thing right that would motivate all of us to continue working towards you know whatever the ministry's goals set out before us for you know next time um but I, I feel like the apartment you know and resolving what's about to happen with lord faisal is probably what i would see as the end of arc one okay <clears throat> on my end mm -hmm. um i you know, this this whole arc, although it hasn't necessarily been fully centered around the apartment that is kind of like the center of what we're all kind of dealing with at the moment uh, as characters. And like, that's like the, that's been the impetus from the beginning, right? Um, so in, in my eyes, 
uh, sealing the cracks is the end point for the first arc. And, um, you know, going to New Heaven and learning more about the Vis and trying to cure Kelby, that's a very strong second act, which is, you know, I think that going to New Heaven and, you know, learning a bunch of stuff and whatever would be a great lead in that we can end on, which will say, you know, it's it's there, it's open-ended if you want to explore it and then, you know, in the next arc and have another arc. If not, it's something that has, you know, contributed a lot. But to me, my character, we know that the cracks are the reason why they were after the apartment. And, you know, even though it was a high elf, you know, doing this contracting, it doesn't take, you know, a genius to think they could just get another high elf who's interested or convince anybody really. And, you know, say, we'll pay you like nothing for whatever reason and come after the apartment again. Um, so from Minrai's perspective of saving the apartment, that will only really be accomplished once we've removed the core reason of why Harmonious Properties and the Vis wanted to go after it, which is the cracks, which we know how to seal now. Right. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. Thanks. Um, small little question. If we were to seal the cracks, would like all of the people that are tuned into the Vis be able to like sense that there's no longer you know, this energy seeping into, you know, the, uh, you know, derelictus from there? Um, it's It may not be so simple. What your characters know is that uh, it was through building inspections and things that um, the cracks were kind of first discovered and thought to be seeping occult energy now how the vis knew to be investigating this particular building enough to get those inspections done is um a little bit up in the air however um notably for example like kelvy was not immediately tuned into the fact that um mm -hmm. this it took the active the act of investigating and getting a really good investigation on those cracks for kelvy to make the connection to uh, Mother Vis and the energy of Vis as something related to the occult energy in the cracks. Um, and so it would not necessarily um, be something that was like, oh, there's like ripple in the force of like everybody like Vis related is now like this isn't going to matter anymore. Um, but it would certainly be something that with investigation they could they would easily realize it is no longer useful to them. Well, okay. and like, for example, like the first thing that we encountered on day one was they sent people to search the building and inspect the building, right? So in Minrai's eyes, if we get rid of the source of why they would have been wanting to do that and wanting to investigate the cracks, the next time they come, we can just be like, here's the basement, there's no more cracks, fuck off, right? <laughs> like, that's kind of her deal um, as far as the cracks. And we are. convinced <clears throat> what Marguerite that... Because she was utilizing the cracks to help with the clutch, right? But we could, yeah. she was like, yeah, I'm totally cool if we get rid of them. I understand. She, yes, she did ultimately after agree to, attack, after the ghoul attack, right. realize that right. they are drawing attention that she is no longer willing to permit. Yes. Here's a real question. Are those, <laughs> are the drow that hatch from those eggs going to be like, like super... Like this, if I like insects, oh my I, <laughs> I do want to clarify. It's not specifically vis viscant energy leaking from the cracks, but it's like the, a cult energy. The occult paper. energy. Mm -hmm. Hello, the occult energy that's coming from the cracks. <laughs> Thank you. <Aww>. Best <laughs> ruby Hi. ever. Nicole says hi. <laughs> bye. Um, bringing me all my ibuprofen and my Aww, water. Shucks. <laughs> Um, so, uh, the energy, yes, the energy coming for through those cracks, sorry, I'm, I am actually going for pills right now. <laughs> do, <laughs> it. Do, it. do it. <laughs> um, so, um, that is not, it's not specifically this, however, it is the type of energy that, uh, and the amount of energy that's coming through, or that is beyond the crack, right, um, is the type of source that, uh, the viscant among the drow are kind of looking for to do their goals. Okay, cool. Um, so I'd still like to hear from Tyler and Andrew um, <clears throat> when you guys are ready to share your thoughts, if you want to. Well, I think that 
everything that everyone's brought up are things that I would love to see come to a close, but mm -hmm. I think the most pressing one to wrap up something and to feel like an arc has completed is the Mr. Moonlight and um, Farquaad thing. Um, because I feel like if that were to end poorly, then it would undo the resolution that we've already had. So I'd like to see all of that be neatly tied up before I'd called it closed. I'd agree with that, yeah. And how, it was the other question, how do we feel about continuing on? Um, that's something that I don't necessarily need us to answer like on stream okay. and in front of everybody because uh, some people might want to, you know, share more, you know, thoughts that feel threatened. I don't know, like the group might not be the best place sure, to like, ask maybe, everyone maybe to like, let's go, right? Maybe it's better to do one on one and yeah, then if exactly. a person really like, doesn't feel like it, they don't exactly. need to be the one that's like, I'm done. And everybody's yeah. like, wow, <laughs> Wow, I you. guess you, yeah, exactly. I guess um, we're not fun. <laughs> and that's, yes, that is ultimately what I uh, want to give people space to feel safe uh, around is, is voicing, you know. Uh, but anyway, I appreciate these responses one thing i wanted to check in on is earlier on sealing the cracks was something that was kind of universally among you something that felt like a was was an end point to this uh but only ava brought it up as one of the things that actually made my list um is that a it was an overlooked and thing or is that a it no longer feels like that has to be an end point for this arc i i, I feel straight like straight up just it, forgot <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like it would be a really nice way to kind of bookend like this, to be able to say, we have completely successfully moved away from this part by absolutely neutralizing the problem. I don't, I don't know if that needs to be the case, but it definitely would feel like complete closure if, you know, we weren't still consistently worrying about other this entities wanting to purchase the property the only other thing that i that i worry about in regards to seeing the cracks is that it might take a lot of time i don't know how difficult it would be for us to find all the components necessary for it um you know given that we have a psychedelic already on hand <laughs> thanks kelby uh, <laughs> all we really have to do is find you're signing <laughs> kelby up to be licked yes you are going to be licked for the clutch that is the oh, state of your character. Licked for the clutch. Um, mm. you know, I mean, finding powerful kills me, just focuses and back. a lot of cement. I don't know how difficult those will be, but um, you know, I, I'm sure that Elise could probably kind of de decide how far it's, we have to it's go. It's been on my mind, you might say. <laughs> Yeah, um, we, so I, it could be something that's very short or be something that's very long. So yeah, didn't we just we fill the cracks with like cement? To... Yeah, we need okay. more cement because yeah. we're pouring into like the fourth dimension. And we so. need things more than just cement, I'm assuming. We yeah. also need the uh, the ritual thing. Focus. We got to go to the heart, talk to my blood witch people. <laughs> um, and that's that's a thing. That's not great because the heart's, you know, unreality. That's it's gonna be its own. I could honestly see se sealing the cracks being its own thing, depending on how long that might end up getting stretched out. But yeah, I feel like a lot of the mm. other things that have come up are just a little more pressing that would need to be their own arcs before that happens. Yeah, like if people in there like just keep getting eaten by ghouls all the time, I would deal with that first personally. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so um i i appreciate all of these um these things that gives me a lot of really good direction because i've i have things like cooked up for you guys but i was like man i really kind of at this point i think we need to like have that conversation over the table of like where we all feel like we're at with the storyline and, and um yeah i agree that well We'll play it out. Um, so this is all very good. Uh, yeah, I was, lit I was literally just about to ask you, like, well, wh what do you feel is, like, a good arc end? So We all die. <laughs> yes, everyone. when everyone's dead, I'll feel ha I'll be happy. 
I explode into a swarm. Speaking of which, should we roll for Kelby's thing? Um, <laughs> no, I want to actually, uh, to honor Sam's and answer Sam's question. Um, I agree. I feel like the ceiling of the cracks is something that, to me, narratively speaks to me a lot as this kind of closure point for this arc of the campaign. Um, I also agree um, fully with everything else that's been said in terms of Mr. Moonlight and Faisal stuff needs to be resolved. Um, and there's stuff going on, right, that hasn't been fully investigated, but you guys are partway into um, with regards to the ghouls and King Teeth um, that I think pursuing that line which is where we're kind of at with um both Hennis and Barnabas and I guess Minrise with Barnabas um so the Ooh, I'm here for the party the three of you um <laughs> kind of separately are pursuing questions that I think will help grant some clarity to some of the things that might still feel like question marks to you all um and I don't want to like say more than that I know it already is kind of you know showing a hand a bit but um with that said, um, I think this gives me a really good idea. And the other piece of it is um, I think we're at a point with this campaign where I want to move us away from, especially because like the biggest time bomb of you have seven days to do this thing is out of the way. I want to move us intentionally away from splitting the party all the time. Um it will enable me to do more for you guys in terms of like throwing in combats more frequently. Cause it's just this game. I like if I throw combat at you while well, you're all split up, like people will die and, or I have to like really nerf the combat system. Um, and so that's kind of, that's been a decision I've made behind the scenes that I haven't talked about a whole lot explicitly with you all, but it's something that I'm like, if we keep the party together, we can do more dynamic things. And that was perhaps a mistake on my part, writing this system, not expecting, not knowing from playing a brand new system that the conditions that I set up for you would kind of force this, this kind of fractured party um for months right and i think it'll also be more fun because it gives you more chances to interact with each other um and drive the party together mm -hmm. instead of having to constantly convene split convene split right um mm -hmm. so that would be something i would want as both your gm uh, for like narrative purposes or for building encounters for you but also for the sake of kind of getting the play um I'm just I'm sorry. The chat's making me laugh. Um, getting getting the 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 gameplay to feels uh, more like everybody is engaged for long periods instead of everybody gets twenty minutes of engagement once every hour and a half, right? Um. Anyway, those are those are the meta things on my brain, uh, along with the kind of story elements that we need to wrap up. So, um. Just just wanting to posit a thought like we, I could see something like, you know, filling the cracks with flex seal. Um, I could see that being um, like a mini arc or like just like a, a one off. We are devoting an entire mini quest to just doing that. Or I could also pretty easily see that being something that we're always kind of striving towards in the background mm -hmm. i i don't i don't know if it needs to be wrapped up this right now but mm -hmm. i understand if minrai mm -hmm. feels very strongly towards that Gotta as do a person it. that this is art. As, as a person that is also you know passionately fearful for the clutch <laughs> well, <laughs> also, it was kind of the catalyst for a lot of this yeah so so one of the things that um, appeals to me about sealing the cracks is the break that it gives us from this first storyline for moving mm -hmm. forward with um, like exploring other parts of Spire. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily, you're right that that doesn't necessarily have to be the only way that we do that, right? If it's kind of this back burner thing of like, when we get the components, we're coming back to do that, right? That still provides a place where that break can happen. So let's do this. Let's get into tonight. Um, we don't have tons of time left with the original frame line, timeline I proposed anyway. I know this has been a very meta thing. Um, but what I want to start us off with um, is I want you all to hear first a little bit about what's going on that your characters can't see. So this is going to be 
um, just me kind of narrating a few things for you um, that are beyond the scope of what you know <laughs> um, is happening. Um, because I think I think a few of these things are going to help. Um, Tying loose ends up. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we're going to what? start. Huh? Hmm? Sorry, nothing. I'm just confused. I love this part of stories, like overarching long stories, where at the very end of an arc, they kind of just give you like the separate scenes that are happening of like things <laughs> going on out there that contribute to the story. It's my favorite, like, well, <laughs> little archetypal niche. That's um, very exciting for you. So uh, these are all going to be things that you guys have directly been influencing, right? Um, and we're going to start at the library where Minrai wants um worked as uh, during her her durance um and at this library uh you may recall a young drow woman to whom minrai gave a book of children's tales um and you all got an advance for that and at the time i told you we're going to come back to this because this is going to matter in a different way um so we're going to follow her as she leaves work and she has the weekend off and she gets into, uh, she finds her way to um, an entrance that some of you have used quite a few times recently um, in Amaranth into uh, the the core of Spire, into the Vermissian kind of tunnels. Uh, and as she descends, she takes off her mask. She just takes off her university robes. Um, and you see she's wearing uh, much kind of, more typical of of the drow who live in derelictus um kind of tighter fitting not flowing elegant form obscuring robes but just normal kind of athletic type clothes where she can climb and she doesn't actually summon a guide um she climbs her way down familiar paths and as she goes um it's her first break that she's had since this book was handed over to her um and you see her slip through a whole um in the side of a tunnel that we wouldn't have noticed without her going through it. And as she does, she enters into a space uh, that is, to put it simply, extremely weird. Um, gravity doesn't quite work right in this space. Not like what you've seen before with people floating, no air, completely like the void of space, gravity, but things maybe bob a little bit until she grabs them and sets them back down. Um, other things look like they should move as she walks past them and, and touches them, but instead they seem firmly in place. Um, and she takes the book out of her coat and she places it on a shelf. Um, and you see her open a door and call down the hallway. Um, hey, dad, dad, you'll never guess what I got at work today. Um, and you see um, a man that weirdly rick has seen dead uh a man who was in a room with books floating uh that oh, shit. who where the the gravity was all wrong where the books were just gone there was no air rick couldn't breathe um you see him come around the corner to see what his daughter has placed on that shelf uh, i took his body parts He's probably like the fractured same in the Vermissian vault, and he can it's some time shit. If we saw him in the future in there, this bullshit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. We saw his future body. <laughs> um, I mean, unreality, I guess, can mean multiple time <laughs> dimensions too. Sorry, <laughs> let's let Elise continue. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Elise. That's okay. He's I'm I'm happy you're you're intrigued. <laughs> um, we're going body. to stay in Amaranth, um, and we're going to go to uh, a place that few of you have been, but Hennis has been many many times uh, at Lady Hellion's estate. Uh, she is sitting behind a desk, um, and she has a group of her attendants, including one other high elf. Um, unknown uh, person none of us none of you know um standing there um and several drow all in masks and she is furious she's fuming 
She's yelling at the people in the room about breaches of security. She's demanding that people go and find out how this could have happened on whose watch did it happen. Um, she's sending uh, the high elf in the group to start accumulating guards, to start accumulating fighters. Um, and as everyone scatters to do these tasks that she's naming to them, she sits down and she grabs uh, she grabs one of the masks from the table. Um, and it's it's one of the fighting masks that Hennis has seen um, so many times. Um, and she looks at it and she tosses it to the side. And as she pulls her own mask off, uh, something... None of you have ever seen a high elf do. You've seen high elves without masks. Um, and you've seen um, high elves wear different masks, but you've never seen one pull uh, um, a, a mask off. Uh, you see not the face of an elf here, but the face of a human. And she sets the mask down and she slams her fist onto the desk. <laughs> And then we're going to pan to Harmonious Properties and the Herald Corporation, where Faisal has recently kicked Kelvy to the curb, said, leave now. It's better this way. And uh, inside, Kelvy is hurrying away from the building. Um, and inside, a fight breaks out. Um, Marilee Erston is dead before she knows what's happened. Um, she joins Neza <laughs> dead among the, Faisal has several attendants with him. They also begin to fight, uh, Faisal fighting, um, more adept at this than perhaps any of you might've guessed that he would be. Um, and within a few minutes, uh, the promise that he would make sure that this ended with him seems to be fulfilled in the most gruesome way possible. And he wipes the drow blood that he has on his hands, on his clothes, and unworried about being stopped in the streets for having clearly other people's blood on his clothes, steps out into the gardens and begins making his way back to Amaranth. Those are those are the scenes Hot dog. Getting. So did Faisal just try to fucking wipe out everybody that's infected with this? No. He doesn't he know he barely oh, knows that... about this. Yeah. He went there to murder uh Well, he was already there. Kelvi told him put an end to this. And yeah. right, said, right, right. Yeah, I'll do that. So he killed people because that's what the only, he did. The only one Kelby wanted dead was Marley, but you know he, that's your wish. he went the extra. This blood is on your hands, hands. Kelby. Yeah. This this he's, blood is on your hands. He's a high elf. He's gonna be extra. Oh fuck! Mother Viz is gonna give me nightmares for this. I'm not ready yeah. for it. You're gonna have like insect PTSD in your dream. I'm, I'm, I'm responsible for a small massacre. It's 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 fine. This is fine. Okay, <laughs> so I know we haven't played any because we've been talking. Oh, that's so so good. I want to hear from you all. Let's start. I think I'm trying to remember where we left everybody last time. Uh, let's just Barnabas and Minrai still on the sky wheel. Yeah. Uh, well, did we actually get on? I know we had been waiting. I didn't we know got we got on. With boarded. The, okay. With the boarded. People. So you are traveling to New Heaven to find out more about King Teeth. My notes say and I got you an eyeball scooper this. souvenir. And I have to. You got me an eyeball scooper souvenir. <laughs> It was a little hand that I could just scoop out the eyeballs. A little it was very hand thoughtful. Spoon. Yeah. Um, Hennis, you were at Civilization. Had you left no. already? I was up at Mama Luke's with Rick. No, they were... Hennis I, I thought you guys had just started heading up Spire. I, I, was, I was going up Spire after... 
well, hold on. Hennis had grabbed his friend Mm -hmm. and then immediately went down to visit Mama Luke's with me. Mm -hmm. I was then leaving to go up to see Kelvy uh, to try to, to to try to just see things out. Yes. And see if Kelvy needed your help. So Hennis, have you left Mama Luke's? I don't know. I had to. That's um, right. You had to. You had to, yeah. to run away to run off the call. Um. Okay. Yeah. So I think I think that we had decided like you and uh and and Rick would have been leaving, um. But we okay. didn't. We didn't really wrap up mm-hmm. where Hennis was was going. Um. So where is Hennis going? Um. Can I watched the VOD, but it was like a week ago. Yeah. What did we <laughs> find out from Mama Luke's? Oh. <sighs> I I wrote down that things in Grist are different and territorial. People are being lost and are people are being fed to uh, King Teeth. Um, And that's that's basically all that I had written down from that interaction. Then I'm probably I'm probably taking Gray home and telling him sorry, but your friend's probably dead. (laughs) <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um and Kelvy, what were you going to do as you left uh Harmonious Properties at or well, the Herald Corporation is where you had this meeting in a hurry. Yeah, I think I was just booking it to the nearest gutter ken. Uh and I was gonna start heading down Spire. Um but I th- did we establish that that Rick was going to reach me around the time the meeting was ending? So I don't know yes. if, if that, that's, he'd reach me before that point. It was going to be a little later because with every Rick had to read and go through. Remember the the thing about the Hallows and all that. Um, plus, mm-hmm. um, travel up Spire. Uh, I don't think that that's enough time. Or I think the meeting took way less time, right? Because the meeting didn't really happen. Than okay. all of that. And so I think um, that it, we had said that it would take a while for Rick to get to Kelvy. Um, That's fine. Uh, I'll go ahead and so that we're not, you know, going like he's not getting there and I'm end up back in derelictus. Um, I'll double back to the Harmonious Properties office. Um you know, my, 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 my business, I own it all now, I guess. Um, and I'm gonna, um, start typing up another article, um, and just kind of wait and hope that somebody comes. Okay. Um, all right, then let's, um, let's do this. Let's, uh, play, um, two scenes out tonight maybe three if we have time, try and keep them pretty short. Um, and we'll start with um, Minrai and Barnabas getting to New Heaven. Um, so this is our first trip to New Heaven, uh, well, for the campaign. <gasps> um, so Barnabas has been here before, but this will be uh, Minrai's first time in New Heaven. Um, and as you step off uh, the docks, uh, off the sky whale into the streets of New Heaven. The, um, oh my gosh, the morticians also uh, c- get off the, the docks here uh, at the docks. And um, the docks up here are totally different than the docks anywhere else in Spire. Um, there's no attendance. There are no toll booths. There are no ticket kiosks because only a few sky whales come up here and it's people bearing priests um because that's pretty much it if you have business in new heaven you are either a mortician or you are uh one of charnel's followers um and spreading out before you uh is you're actually so for if you don't know new heaven is the literal top of spire you are open air up here um because uh, and so uh you have to have your sun protective gear on as drow uh there's also a wind that whips um and the kind of tattered 
derelictian clothes of Barnabas are just flapping around. Um, up here have a, has a very different aesthetic, right? Because of the wind. Is it kind of like Marilyn Monroe and it like comes up and I have to push it down so not everybody <laughs> if, sees the cock and balls? You, yeah, if that's what you wanted to go for, I mean... <laughs> I, I was gonna it let it be like, like cool, cool anime, like <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, Barnabas no. is totally like ooh. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> sweet Pea, looks sweet Pea like puts her paw mm -hmm. up, right? It was like a little like pose um, for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, and what you see is a, a very interesting place because on kind of to your left. Um, as you can look out into the distance, you see these weird, mostly white with black, like white stone uh, or building materials with mostly black um, and gray hang like cloth hangings and dec decor. Um, and this part of New Heaven, you know, is the necropolis. Um, the necropolis is where the morticians rain it is there uh oh oh gosh oh god Tell tyler no. is, uh... <laughs> what did i do did, did the wind what knock him out oh no <laughs> green? yeah I you just know it turned into like a flashing green screen so mm -hmm. <laughs> um oh god <laughs> um and the the necropolis is not somewhere um that people go you could go there i it's up to you uh rachel if you think that barnabas would have gone um, to the necropolis. To where? The necropolis oh. at any point. Um, it's where the morticians um, store, for lack of a better word, where they interrogate. Would there be a reason for me to go to like the morticians area? Or no, you said before that that you, is. it is what I'm. Yes, the morticians and the and Charnel's worshippers don't get along. Um, but right, but I feel like I I also wouldn't like actively seek them out to fuck with them. No, like, but what I'm saying is they do not guard it, nor do they force anyone to not come in. It is not a place that you cannot go. It is just a place that most people do not go. Oh, um, then I probably looked around it and stuff out of just curiosity and yeah, to see if there were any pieces left about that were available for munching. <laughs> uh, Spare no finger munching. <laughs> that, you know, didn't get embalmed or... Uh, no munching, but you know that... Um, it is considered the most haunted place uh, in Spire, and that ghosts, which are... I ain't afraid of no ghosts. <laughs> um, ghosts are a a pretty pretty real concern of people in Spire. It's why the morticians have such a powerful hold over a lot of politics and things. Is because if the morticians or in you know in recent years Charnel's worshippers don't do their jobs, then ghosts start to pile up in the in in the rest of spire so this is kind of like a housing <laughs> housing place for ghosts literally a city cool. of the dead um but most people uh including barnabas don't have much means of talking to ghosts um and so it just kind of has this very spooky haunted dead feel to the necropolis um and smaller to your right um is a where dead you feel to the necropolis okay Sorry. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> um, smaller and to your right is where you're more familiar with. And this is uh, the territory that the um, worshippers of Chernel have won from the morticians up here. Um, and wild packs of hyenas um, that you have introduced uh, live out here and they hunt and eat wild birds and things that fly by as well as wild ghosts. <laughs> ghosts, is that what you said? I said wild ghosts. Yeah, they eat ghosts. Yeah. I don't know. Do they? Maybe. Um, as well as things that... Are they um, helpful ghosts? <laughs> there are actually... There's an entire page. I I can't believe I haven't made this connection yet. But there is an entire page in the appendix of goats commonly found in Spire. And they are fucking what? funny. <laughs> We have to get there. Goats commonly found um, in Spire. Excuse I know. Me. I'm sorry. I'm literally realizing... Okay, here we go. Appendix 4... Rumored goats of Spire. <gasps> <laughs> you what? just destroyed Sam. Um. Oh my gosh. Let's see. Kelby, you could have been a goat instead of a bug. <laughs> I think. Uh, 
<laughs> the supra vertical bach yeah they are wiry mad-eyed single-minded they like to get up high and often climb on other goats they've evolved to use can tools. one climb on top of sweepy they've, they've evolved to use tools um and as much as they can build rudimentary it's levers worth. to upend heavy bits of masonry and drop on attackers <laughs> So I think Chelsea, I mean, Chelsea oh requests gosh. all of you to take <laughs> a strong Chelsea moment. requests that you take a I'll... picture of this and post it. To okay. imagine goats with opposable thumbs. Absolutely with hooves? Idea. So no, what if they hands. just have hooves? What if just they just have hands. hooves and thumbs? Just no, hooves and thumbs. Oh. It's just hands. It's goats no. with hands. Hooves what and thumbs. I'm calling it. Us to uh... do this. Okay, <laughs> I'm putting it in the Discord. Good night, everybody. But regardless, I'm going to say that super <laughs> vertical bok do live on the top in New Heaven and sometimes are hunted by um, the, uh, <laughs> what's it called? The hyenas. There's probably been a few, like, really interesting, like, because hyenas are pretty smart, right? And these these goats have used, evolved to use tools. Um, I think that there's been some pretty interesting turf warfare. wars between hyenas and goats. Yeah. Oh, maybe the goats used tools to build little chariots to put on the backs of the hyenas, and they ride around. There's the been a truce for the last five years. <laughs> between the goats and the hyenas. Yeah, they let them have their dead I goats instead of hunting. Uh, live goats. Okay, we're never gonna get done by eight thirty if we keep going like this. <laughs> um, and yeah, this is this is the territory uh, that Charnel um, has kind of claimed, or the the worshippers of Charnel. Uh, and you, I presume, make your well, way. I'll turn to Minrai and say, "This is where we hang out." You see Look a pack of all the goats. You see a pack of goats walk by. There's one perched on another one's back, and Sweepy kind of. <laughs> yeah, that is. Uh, this explains quite a bit. If I'm being, if I'm being quite a hundred percent honest with you, it, it all it's all coming together now. Because of the stacked goats with the opposable thumbs. Yes, yeah. so it's very the, the puzzle of Barnabas. I feel like I have gained another piece in our long friendship. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, and then I would, I would assume that my like goal is to just go straight to the temple church yeah there's building? a big temple kind of building um i mean quite a few honestly because this is where most of the worshipers of charnel spend a lot of their time um as well as you know they go few are as singly located as you are most are can more we roving. please say that barnabas has pockets full of oats and as we walk because i prepared to come up here and you as we walk by i'm just throwing oats to goats, the goats. yeah i'm, I'm yes. gonna to goats. minra's gonna nudge you and be like well uh it occurs to me that i did not really think this fully through for some reason but I won't be like murdered just for being up here, right? Like I'm, I'm safe in. Many, do you boat. really think I would bring you up here if I that mean, was going to happen? You to high, uh, to to uh, my family's home, and, and I wasn't murdered. Well, yes, that is quite fortunate. Everybody loved me. Oh, that is um, true. They did. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to be spinning around like in the sound of music. Uh, yeah. With the wind flapping around and just spinning oats around as we're walking toward there. You just because I'm really element. happy. I'm really happy to be back up here again and just, I miss the goats. Such a joy in your eyes. We will have to feed goats later, perhaps, to people in their electus. We'll have to feed the goats to the people in their electus? Goats is, aren't for it. eating, Minrai. That's disgusting. I Perhaps, okay. Uh, where are we going? And I'll just uh, start walking towards the temple. Okay. Uh, yeah, you make your way over to um, the temple. There are other worshippers of Charnel, some that you know, some that you don't, um, passing you. You see a couple packs of hyenas trot by, um, one of them carrying like a big old leg in their mouth. Um, 
I wave. <laughs> There's also some uh, like vultures and other types of like carrion birds um, that fly by um, and and perch around here a lot. Um, unlike the necropolis, which is like dead, no animals go there, no people are seen walking around. This side is kind of lively in the sense of like it's all people who eat the flesh of dead people, but it is lively in the sense that there's some activity um some hubbub um and as you uh you kind of approach in and uh, what was the name was it mauve or mod or mod mod i believe um yeah yeah, you 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 get to the temple um and you start making your way toward uh where you know like your kind of superior like the person you would report to um and you see mod sitting outside uh the room already um she looks up and she sees you and ah Barnabas, hello. I see you made your way up Spire so far already. It's only been a couple days. What uh, did it? Did something happen? Do, had I talked to Maud before or after the ghoul attack happened? Before, it was right? Oh shit! It was, it was before, right before the ghoul attack happened. Oh, yeah, okay. She came to tell us that the ghouls were acting weird. Um. Yeah, Maud. So. Right after you talked to us about the ghouls, we had a ghoul attack ourselves. What? And in, at yeah. the why? After, at the clutch. Is the clutch okay? It's... The uh, clutch yeah. is fine. It is in the best hands imaginable. Mod, this is Minrai. Yes. Hello. I have made the journey and blessed this place. The midwives have come to give you their graceful and always welcome hello and This thank is you. grace enough for this place. <laughs> what? What's not? <laughs> She's like sucking on a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> a goat brings her some whiskey. <laughs> like, a goat walks by. Yeah, I love thumb. I love the idea of like these goats are like They've got like a a business, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. They've got like, like uh... stratified through the entire economy. <laughs> um, like like R two at uh, Java's palace with the little like thing on his head, like bringing yeah. drinks around to people. That's like these goats in uh, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> and she she takes a yeah she takes a a whiskey off of the goat's back, <laughs> chugs it, oh, slams it down. Um, nice. <laughs> And uh, and pats Sweet Pea on the head and says, well, I, "Are you here to to talk about the ghouls? Because that's uh we got another." Oh meeting. wait, where's her? What was her hyena? Wasn't it Bean? Bean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bean is there. It was Pea and Bean. Yeah, and I Bean... scratch Bean behind the ears. <laughs> Bean is um Bean is actually uh you see Bean down the hallway, <sighs> trotting past with um some other hyenas of other priests, and Sweet Pea kind of looks at you like, "Go on." She yeah. trots off. Go say hi to your friends. <laughs> um, yeah, she joins. Don't a little... travel too far. She, you get the sense that she no- is nodding. If she would nod, I'm sorry. I'm mm-hmm. moving a lot because I'm trying to find a spot where my ankle doesn't feel like it's. Um... I understand. <laughs> um, and so I'm just like I'm. I'm uncomfortable. Can you tell? Um, <laughs> and so uh, yeah, and, and Sweet Pea um, kind of trot. You see them turn a corner, um, and just as some goats come around the corner, and there's this kind of like skidding noise um, as like the hyenas kind of scatter to get out of the paths of the goats, and the goats are kind of like glaring over their shoulders. Um, and uh, <laughs> and Ma- Maud turns to you and just like, "Can you believe these goats, man? They they just." They're everywhere now. It's like 50 years ago, there were three of them, and now they're just taking over. I mean, it wouldn't be surprised me if we lose territory to these guys instead of the morticians next year. Yes, they look quite healthy if you ever need help. Healthy? Let me know. They look like they're going to eat me. <laughs> <laughs> she likes uh... that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Maud, uh... I wanted to talk a bit more about the ghouls and King Teeth. I wanted to... Were you able to to uh, pass on my vial of that blood? That blood? Be... That... Yeah, I did. And I, I, I told him what you said. And <clears throat> Excuse me. That was... <laughs> we'll pretend that was because of the cigarette. That's mod. That's yeah. mod, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta tell you, Barnabas, like, they... They didn't seem happy about what they were looking at. 
not yeah, sure. But I'm not but... happy about it, but we need to try and fix it. Charnel fixes things in his own way. Yeah, through us, so we're gonna work. And through the consumption of flesh. <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. I do that. Mod, I... you know you can't just be lazy and say that Chanel's gonna take <laughs> care of it. That's lazy religion right there. I'm just saying maybe don't hang your hopes on a solution that doesn't involve dead people. We keep I mean, him well fed, and I rib Barnabas a little bit. <laughs> oh, I mean, there's no the bodies trail. in there, Elictus. Come on. This is something we all know. It's I guess true. what I'm telling you, kid, is she calls you kid. <laughs> You're <laughs> old, too. She's Mod, older. I'm six months younger than you are. Hey, uh, kid. I'll <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> figure out in like one pull. Just one go. Yeah. Yeah. It's not even lit. She's just sucking on it. <laughs> um, she. I guess <clears throat> what I'm telling you is a lot of times when something like this comes up, the answer from Charnel is stamp it out, not fix it. That's fixing it. Does that make sense? I don't know. I'm not in the room where the decisions are getting made, but... Yeah, but isn't... Killing a whole bunch of them makes the blood come out, and then that's how it spreads, so it, fe it seems to me like maybe that's a dangerous way to try and fix it. Bring it up with the higher-ups. Uh, and at that point, the door opens, um, and you see... I feel like we had other names for people who are, like, your contacts. Do you remember up here uh there were other old men names so like phineas maybe and in regards to the problem that they're oh, talking about two are they and talking three. about the cracks or the ghouls yeah i'm sorry elise i didn't actually finish filling it out <laughs> it's fine i guess wait i'll, I'll write it right now i have Did it like, open we've got crusty western names yeah we have phineas, phineas? and um Herb? no how dare you Butch. I was thinking like Bartleby, but that's a little too close to Barnabas. And I've already got a fucking oh, lizard Wyatt. named Jebediah. What? Got some old western names. Like what, what, Wyatt Earp? Well, Phineas <laughs> appears in the doorway. And, and Saul. He's an old Jew. What is it? Saul. 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 Saul's a good one. Sinisa, uh appears in the doorway um and and looks out and is like oh my oh oh uh Barnabas good to good to see you um I don't know that we've met and he's pointing at um Minrai uh yes I do not know that we have met uh it my name is Minrai it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance I am here uh to support my <laughs> to support my friend uh, and yeah, I brought her with me because uh, she was curious, and she helps me a lot down there. So I thought that maybe I could show her around. Uh, we are around. on the opposite sides of the cycle of life for the drow. I it's true. Take care of the clutch. You take care of the dead. And I figured, why not meet the people who shepherd the bodies that I help raise? That's <clears throat> significantly nicer than some of the other midwives i've met so i'm inclined to let you in and uh why don't we why don't we all talk i think there's some things uh we could we could figure out together and invite i brought uh, some neat stuff and i just take out the like liver that i took from the guy that was in the floating in the thing oh uh, like i took body parts and stuff remember is it a snack uh no no don't oh. don't eat this oh. well, i found this <laughs> Coming up Spire, there was this weird, like, floating place, and there was a body in there, and it was, like, seeped with occult magic. It, it's not safe to eat, but I thought, 
maybe Rachel's thinking that there's a lot more science going on here than is actually happening. <laughs> I just imagine one of the guys being like, well, let's feed it to a goat. Right. See what happens. Take it to the lab. Uh, take well, it to the lab. Take it to the lab. Bring it in. It's not the first sample lab. you've sent us. We can talk about all that. Um, and ushers you inside, and uh, we're going to leave that scene. Um, um, and I want to check in. Um, what would Hennis do after, or, or, well, do you want, let's put it this way. You start walking Gray home, um, and Gray is like, all right, all right, man, so... We got a we got a lead, right? This thing uh, that's happening out in was it Grist? Um, that's we're gonna go check it out. We're gonna find Harlow, right? Like Harlan, we're gonna get him. We're gonna. Uh, what is this we that you are going on about? <laughs> that was we. That was the deal. I was like, hey, can you help me find? The guy whose brother you... The way that I remember it, it was more of a, hey, can you find this guy for me? And you and haven't, haven't found seen. him. So, so then I think I will continue to do that. Okay. And if... Oh. In case he perhaps shows back up at your apartment. Oh, come on. Let me go with you. I can, and no I can fight. There. I, can, I can get the... All right. I can't fight. I would rather have you alive than dead next to my dead body as well. <laughs> when you put it Sorry. that way, I'll go home. <laughs> uh, but if you can find this guy, uh, you know, like I said, good deal on shit for you. I assure you I will be looking. Perhaps I will even find him. Thanks. Uh, yeah, and unless you have anything else you want to say to Gray, he's going to at home. I am going to make sure he actually goes home, but okay. I'm done with the conversation. <laughs> yeah, sure. Now. Yeah, yeah. Um, he tries a few more times to, like, engage you in conversation. He's like, so that one time, and you're just, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, you get home, uh, or you get to his home, he goes inside, and he's like, all right, uh, good luck. Hope you find him before rent's due, because money's tight, man. You know how it is. Uh, yep. <laughs> you freak me out sometimes. and closes the door. <laughs> And that's uh yeah, you leave him there. Where where does Hennis go? Um yeah, I mean with no one else down Spire, he's gonna fall back on his original plan and try and go up to the Hellion estate. Okay. Which Andrew now knows might not be the best idea, but we're gonna <laughs> do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um you had to uh be the gutterkin and get a guide. Um uh, one of them mentions having just seen your friend go through a second ago, because I think Rick would have already been on his way up um, at this point. So, uh, but, you know, that's it's just kind of because they've seen you travel together in the past. Um, mm -hmm. And you start uh, ascending up to Amaranth. Um, so let's jump now. I want to uh, get to Rick arriving um, <clears throat> to the gardens. Uh, would you go to Harmonious Properties, or where would you go, Rick? Oh, you're muted. Sorry. To the best of my knowledge, the meeting is still happening, right? Yeah, so you, you would assume that if the meeting is still happening, uh, it might be kind of a long meeting then, because remember, you did have to travel to get there. Um, but there's no reason to think that it would be a short meeting either. There was no real indication either way. Um, and so... Yeah. Um, I think it would be a safe assumption that the meeting could still be going on or that if if it had finished, it would have only been in the last half hour. Then um, I think I'm going to be heading to wherever the meeting was actually being held at. OK, um, uh, that is the Herald Corporation. Yeah. OK. Yeah. At the Herald Corporation. OK. <clears throat> um, as you are walking down uh the streets of the gardens um fairly familiar path i don't think you've been to the herald corporation but it's actually you pass harmonious properties to get there um and you see um a bit of a commotion up ahead of you 
um, <clears throat> you're maybe two streets away from where the Harmonious Properties building is, um, and you see a group of people gathered together. It's just, it's Drow, um, and they're they're talking. They're kind of behind whispered hands um, and looking over their shoulders down a street that is per or perpendicular, right? It goes the other way um, towards yeah. um, what you would directionally know uh, would be kind of outside outer spire, um, like so towards the walls. Uh, and they're kind of all gathered there, ch kind of chattering and like talking amongst each other, kind of hushed voices. Okay, I go ahead and walk up to them and just completely obliviously, um, hey, uh, any of you guys happen to know where about the uh, Herald Corporation is? I'm supposed to meet someone there. Uh, one of the one of the drow kind of turns and looks at you. Um, got big goggles, big fat goggles on. Um, and, uh, and, and like thick gloves. This might be someone who actually works in agriculture in the gardens. Um, and, and they're like, the Herald Corporation, isn't that, uh, the bread place? And one of the other people is like, yeah, the bread place. Um, and they're, they're really distracted, like looking over that shoulder or, oh, down the, down the street. And the first person is like, I get, uh, I think you just keep going that way, like four more blocks, maybe one to one to the east. Something like that. Uh, um, um, all right. Um, is there a particular reason we're all being so discreet right now? Um, and the guy kind of like looks you up, um, and down and like takes in your, your Lejeune robes and kind of like notices like your place, right? Um, as, as kind of a priest and someone who is trustworthy in that way. Um, and, and <clears throat> it's like, I think a high elf was here. Um, I just saw him or them. I don't know. Going that way. We all did. And like he had, they had some people with them. And the dude was just covered in blood. Like just covered in it. Just walking through the streets. And like, I saw some fucking city guards go by and they didn't do shit. Just a guy walking down the street covered in blood. I mean, so on a metagame level, in the the gardens, there is hanging gardens where it's literally just hanging dead drow, right? Yes. Um, that is not near here. Okay. Um, this is, this particular area of the gardens is more uh, business related, like distribution or manufacturing of the produce and the food that is grown. The actual corpse fruit grove, which is the the um, hanging fruit or the hanging gardens and where they like actually do the growing um, is a little bit further in and like up spire. You're kind of at the low base end where distribution occurs. Okay. Uh, so then I would take it that <laughs> this is something that does not happen. That, High uh, elves walking through the streets covered walking in blood. Walking down streets covered in blood. No, yeah. no. The the um, reaction of these people kind of gathered and staring. Um, and a conglomeration of people. So like one person who seems like maybe a farmer type, which is kind of actually unusual for this area. Um, but a lot of like office workers who seem to have come out to stare at this kind of strange sight. I mean, I, I, I realize that he was probably, you know, in his mask, but... But did he look okay? Like, was he just storming away to someplace? Or? Uh, I mean, let me put it this way. I wouldn't have messed with that person. They, I mean, like, anybody covered in blood. But, like, it wasn't the kind of covered in blood where I wanted to, like, run up and be like, do you need help? It was the kind of blood covered in blood where I was like, don't notice me. Please. If I... he's covered in vis blood, is that... Is that dangerous for him? Hmm. I'll find out. Um, uh, well, um, this s certainly can't be good. Um, s stay, stay safe, I guess. Uh, I'll try to find the Herald Corporation then. Um, good luck. Yeah, and I, I guess I, uh, Hey, would uh bid them farewell. Can you like do a blessing and like 
you know, if that guy murdered a bunch of people, can you just kind of like clear the spirits or something? Uh, I, I, absolutely. I, I mean, I, I look at them like, do they look like they're like not only concerned, but in distress? They look scared. It's I mean, any, you know, it, it would be the equivalent of kind of like hearing a gunshot from somewhere in your neighborhood and not knowing where it came from. Like the kind of scared of like neighbors getting together to be like, what the fuck was that? Like, is are we OK? Is something going to happen to us? Like uncertain, especially given that a high elf is not going to be challenged or whatever, right? So, like, who was he killing? Why was he here, right? Are we next? Okay, um, <clears throat> I would ask, uh, what, what, what is your name? Oh, I don't have a good name for this person. Um, <laughs> uh, um, this will be, uh, Adola. Their name is Adola. Adola, okay. Uh, A-D-O-L-A. Adola. Pleasure to meet you, Adola. Um, are, are you a, a follower of Lemier? Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, I think <clears throat> most of us appreciate and, and our glorious lady. That is music to my ears. Um, in, in that in that case, I in that case, talking to Sam, I'm gonna go ahead and uh do my uh right of respite because I, I i would do that for own like knowing that they would um appreciate the gesture and not just in me like you know trying to offer my words of you know condolence yeah um so yeah i'm, I'm gonna just uh, by one time per session, right. I'll do my I mean, we're, of we're basically ending the session in a second here, so <laughs> not gonna yeah. hurt anything. Um, <laughs> um yeah. uh, so I, I go ahead and um I I probably have like a spare candle or two on me. <laughs> um and, and uh I uh, usher everyone to kind of just uh sit down uh and I uh pass around a small little bit of Malak and uh, we all have a, a, a nice little uh, picnic, probably not in the middle of the street, but like, you know, did you just a have a drug bit. picnic? Yep, we just had a drug picnic. <laughs> um, go ahead. Uh, you can, you can erase stress for this because it is the right of respite, right? Yes. Um. So, and what is it you do? You roll, or you just get to mark three off? Is that? Um. So I get to uh, all allies present may restore three stress for mind or blood. Okay. So I don't know if that counts for me. Uh, but I do get to refresh when I help those who cannot. I, help I, yeah, I was gonna say like, I, have we been in the past? Have we been doing that? You get your own right of respite healing. It's a, I've not been doing it for myself. I've been um, doing it for other people. Present. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I was going to say if take a, a, a D. Mm, did a D3 last time. Do you want to do that again? Um, I feel like using right of respite as like an ability um, plus like the group. I'm actually inclined towards D6 here. I mean, I think that you're like going out of your way to burn an ability on people you don't know and granted i know there's a little metagaming in the fact that like the game the session's over but it still is just like <laughs> i think really nice that rick is doing that so um are you gonna are, you don't want the d6 <laughs> well, well i mean i mean i i would be like yeah give me that d6 if it was my idea to roll the blessing well, but it was <laughs> to roll the to, to relieve stress from it no, I think because they asked for him to do something oh, is what he's saying. Yeah, yeah but you yeah, could have yeah, just I mean, said, like, like Limier, bless you, my children, and, like, moved on, right? Like, you sat and, like, did this. All right, roll a oh, okay, D3. Okay, okay, <laughs> Take the D6, Sam. Take it. F fine, I'll, I'll take the D6, because the last <laughs> time I only got a, uh, um, wait, it's R, every time I get this wrong, R slash. No, slash R. Damn it. It's so not right. Have you R ever space. used yeah, have you ever used like <laughs> commands in old video games? Cause that was how okay. 
fine. Or an IRC like, with that. Yeah, exactly. I did it in visual basic. There you go. That's three. You can you can take three. Are you taking them all from mind or are you getting your silver as well? Uh well Just from I, my notes. Um, I mean I didn't do anything to alleviate silver stress unless they pay me for my fee. Um they give you all like any refreshing. I don't know what how any religion works. Refreshes okay. are not specific to what kind of stress you have. You can choose. Okay, I I'm going to I'm going to remove two from mind and then can I remove like my temporary stresses i've i've had two on shadow for months <laughs> yeah 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 you can do that so take one off of your shadow temporary one so now i have like a free slot for shadow okay okay um yeah and then uh as you finish that up and they, they all thank thank you and um <clears throat> you know adola um who uses they them pronouns uh it, it kind of uh shakes your hand um and says if you know if you're ever up in the agriculture district uh you know i'll i'll be there it was it was nice of you to um to take the time and um just kind of as a contact point if you ever want it um and anything for a follower of Vimier. <laughs> and uh yeah you head on down or you said you were going to Harold Corporation yeah okay then let's uh let's wrap up with um Tyler, uh, what is Kelvi doing? You said writing. Um, it's it's been it's been a little while. It's probably been a solid hour um, to an hour and a half now since uh, you left the Herald Corporation. Sure. Um, so I'm gonna. It's it's gonna be a fairly quick uh, play by play kind of bulleted out uh, of, you know, if you're reading the dead uh, kind of a thing. Um, and uh, we have two copies. I'm going to keep one on me. Uh, and it's, it's just basically giving, like, literally everything, um, aside from my, my involvement with the ministry, um, talking about this, talking about... Uh, uh, my involvement with this, uh, I talk about in a very positive light. Uh, it's a it's a, a a great thing, and you know, don't don't be afraid of it. Um, and I'm going to also talk about Mr. Moonlight, uh, did we have and that to roll I do. For Kelvin today? No, we okay, did not. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt no, that's you. Okay. I just I it suddenly just came because we're, we're basically covering like an hour of real time. Sure, sure. I was gonna skip it for this session. Okay, sorry. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm 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 basically just you know uh, a, a a typed up uh, article ready to go in case I need it or someone else needs it. Um, uh, go ahead. And then I'm just gonna I guess wait out before you do. Uh, roll resist for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's one d ten. Oof. Yeah. yeah. No, that checks out. That checks out. <clears throat> All right. Um. So oh, we double damage. <laughs> what? We double damage from, what? from a critical fail on resist. What's he resisting? Um. This. Uh, <laughs> I thought we weren't rolling for things. This is a different thing. Uh, you take eight stress. Um, I'm going to say <laughs> this. Uh, we're going to put <clears throat> um, five to mind and three to blood. From what? Elite? <laughs> I'm going to roll... <laughs> Uh, is are, Tyler? Are you frozen, or can you hear me? Oh uh, no, I can okay. hear you. If my picture's frozen, I'm, okay. Yeah, I, I I can still hear you. That takes your total to eight, right? So yes, um, yes. I will roll a d10, Don't and if it is die, if it's um 
a seven or lower, you will take fallout. It is. Okay. Oh, oh. Um. Mm. What? Can you do anything? Can you do anything? Like, just to uh, Can I do anything? If at all feasible. <laughs> Minrai, poof uh, into the <laughs> Minrai, um, like at uh, all possible, at least. If that's eight. all feasible, I could uh, eight. fall. Eight is only a moderate fallout. It's not a severe. I could fall straight. So you're not on. dead. You're just gonna oh. lose a limb or something. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fine. That's fine. No, um, yeah, my only. I'm I'm looking at my refreshes right now. Um. But he did something reckless for the sake of a good story. I have not eliminated an enemy of the ministry. I definitely have not fulfilled a dream sent by this, and I have <laughs> not revealed a secret to my readers yet. So no, Actually, <laughs> no, 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 I can't. Would 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 uh, Mary Lee have counted as an yeah. enemy to the ministry? That's what I was going to ask because she is technically anti-drow. But he was yes. at zero before this, so he no. wouldn't have been able to refresh from zero That's before. That's true. You All have to, I have, I have other stressors that I or the, the resistances I could uh, get rid of, like the the for oh. but but that's to oh, reputation and shit. So, oh, so it wouldn't have helped. It wouldn't have yeah, helped. Yeah. Okay. It wouldn't have helped. Blood of mine, no. So <laughs> nope. Uh, unless there's any vis, have any we vis powers, I could leave myself. Um. um you are going to take moderate fallout. Um, yeah, yeah. You erase sure. five. So you will, you can take five from whatever you want upon taking this fallout. Um, but you now need to mark on your character sheet that you are permanently weird. Um, weird is a. Um, uh, like a, a trait, essentially. Um, you are obsessed. That is your weirdness. Yeah. Um, is an obsession. Um, <clears throat> you are now focused on. Is a that what? Is that what Rick got too? Or no, he got a paranoia. He got a paranoia. Okay, sorry, mm -hmm. I was just trying to follow. No, you're good. Um, or a phobia. Sorry, you got a phobia. Um, oh yeah, right. Yeah, permanently weird is like a. Um, you can get treatment or whatever, and it alleviates it. Uh, but it's just kind of like something can trigger like some kind of weirdness and response but this version of it is uh, is a higher level this is obsession um you are now permanently weird but when you uh attempt to achieve your goal um which we will figure out what your goal is in a second um you can roll with mastery right. but all of your other actions have a difficulty of one so if you are not actively working towards oh. your goal you are rolling with difficulty all the time um oh damn once okay. you achieve your goal, your mind gives under strain and you are forcibly retired. Oh shit, this is a that's not true. What? Holy shit. I was like, this is a this is a the severe fallout. That's way too much. Okay. I, was <laughs> I read the fucking insane. book wrong. I was like, oh, this is good. I didn't read the last sentence and I was like, God damn. <laughs> um moderate <laughs> yeah no yeah let's not have that difficulty thing let's keep the permanently weird but not make it the obsessed which is where it gets the difficulty level um uh yeah so you are permanently weird my bad i'm sorry i didn't mean to freak you out that badly can we, uh, can we repeat what the permanently yes, weird i'm mean? going to read it sorry so yeah. Um, so let me just look at the low because I was looking at too high. Um, so you're going to have obsessive behavior of some kind, right? That's a piece of the weird. Um, and the GM can trigger it whenever they want. So your obsessive behavior will show when I say it does or when you want it to. Um, and uh, you have to get proper treatment to fix it. Um, and it is, you can suppress the effects of this fallout for a scene by marking D3 against mind, stress against mind. So if you don't want the weirdness, if I mm. say like your weird is going to show here, like you can say, I'm going to suppress it for the scene and roll the D3 and take that against mind instead. Um, mm. I'm so sorry that I was like giving you a severe fallout when I said I wouldn't. <laughs> um okay oh, that's and fine. that's fine um, you retire you, your character you do not <laughs> um 
the the <laughs> obsession, the obsessiveness that you are feeling is toward Vis. Um and your obsession is making people understand that this is not evil. People who know, like you don't want to tell people about it if they don't know. But people who know, your obsessiveness comes around showing that it's not that bad, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And you do not successfully write the letter. Mm. You are stopped. That feels right. um, From writing this letter. And that's where we're going to (laughs) stop. So think about what you want to do with Kelby next time. But we do need to go because my poor ankle uh, really needs to get elevated so that uh, some of the blood drains out of it. And um, let's, uh, yes, is there anything we need to pitch tomorrow night is tier um with me rachel and sam um and then there's just us just the three of yes there's nobody else plus other players and galway our benevolent or whatever gm i don't know (laughs) how that we don't we don't know either we don't know either we'll see tomorrow (laughs) um and um, I think that's it. Thanks for playing tonight. Sorry that it was a weird ass like hour of mostly just talking meta stuff, but I think that it, it was worked a permanently out. weird and episode. Yeah, permanently weird episode. I'm permanently oh, boy. Weird. all right. Um, <laughs> is there anything else before we wrap up? No. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Thanks for hanging mm-hmm. with us. Good night. Bye. Bye. Have a good extra long weekend. <laughs>